Hello and welcome to Ecoterrorism. I'm Zainab Beyloun. Sustainably designed buildings are increasingly important today, what with the constant problems we are facing in taking care of our environment. Here with us today to, to discuss green building is Mr. Shakir Noon, an environmental activist. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. So before we start our discussion for today, here's our first report and we'll be back. Green building refers to a structure and a process that is environmentally responsible and resource efficient throughout a building's life cycle, which ranges from design, construction, operation, to maintenance and renovation. Although new technologies are constantly being developed to complement current practices in creating greener structures, the common objective is that green buildings are designed to reduce the overall impact of the built environment on human health and the natural environment by efficiently using energy, water and other resources, protecting occupant health and improving employee productivity, reducing waste, pollution and environmental degradation. A 2009 report by the U.S. General Services Administration found 12 sustainably designed buildings that cost less to operate and have excellent energy performance. Buildings account for a large amount of land, according to the National Resources Inventory. Approximately 107 million acres of the land in the United States are developed. The International Energy Agency released a publication that estimated that existing buildings are responsible for more than 40% of the world's total primary energy consumption and for 24% of global carbon dioxide emissions. The design, construction and maintenance of buildings have a tremendous impact on our environment and our natural resources. The building sector alone consumes two-thirds of electricity produced in the U.S. and is a significant contributor to air pollution and the pollutants that cause climate change. The challenge then becomes to build smart so that buildings use a minimum of non-renewable energy, produce minimal pollution, and use a minimum of dollars, while increasing the comfort, health, and safety of the people who work in them. Do people really acknowledge the importance of green architecture? And how does green architecture affect our environment and our behavior? So, Mr. Noon, uh, to start with, green building is basically about uh, creating environmentally sound and resource efficient buildings. And some of the most important parts of what they allow us to do is including, uh, includes energy efficiency, renewable energy, water conservation, and the different considerations of environmental practices that are better for the environment around us. So, as an architect, what can you tell us about green building that makes it so vital for us today? Well, we can resume this issue by uh, saying that it is uh, less resources more efficiency mm -hmm. and uh, mainly we as architect we should uh, see in green buildings that uh, mainly it is not an accessory that we, we finish our design we finish our uh, architecture and then we plug it uh, to a facade or, or to a roof it's part of the design of the concept and starting from the concept we can think about green solutions mm -hmm. more ventilation uh, uh, when choosing our materials, how, how much we are using re uh, natural resources, all the uh, thinking plus uh, the insulation, all these kinds of that will, will reduce our, our uh, invoice at, uh, at, uh, at the end and uh, uh, give us a, a more vital space that could be uh, a pleasant environment for everybody. Mm -hmm. Is there a demand for green architecture today? Uh, we have two perspectives for the green architecture. F uh, from the side of the uh, developers, maybe they can see it as a marketing tool to promote those uh, uh, projects mm -hmm. and uh, use it as a uh, marketing tool, that's it. So we call it sometimes that it is greenwashing. Mm. Uh, so this is the bad side of the uh, usage of uh, uh, green buildings. But mainly when people, it's a culture, it's a matter of culture, when people really understand that paying a little bit 10%, 20% more will at the long term will reduce your maintenance issue, will reduce your lifestyle, your invoices, your, your cost, your daily cost or monthly cost. So this is a proof that uh, green architecture can lead at the end to reduce your cost 
and uh, give you a, a lovely space. Mm -hmm. Considering that green architecture can sometimes be uh, more expensive, do you think it would be viable uh, on, a, on a mass scale in terms of you know, different countries where it may be not possible for everyone to it's access It's a matter of, di of time. You know that technology is all, all, all the time is evolving. Mm -hmm. that, uh, this is uh, a proof that, uh, for example, the solar panels for heating. So we used to buy a system for 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 10,000 maybe. Now you can afford a, a, a system with $800 or $1,000. Uh, same thing for the, uh, for the photovoltaic, uh, now we compare that one uh, watt uh, equivalent to one dollar, uh, uh, for example. So uh, lately, two years ago, it was not affordable like this. One panel could uh, cost you one thousand, two thousand uh, dollars. So technology is improving and uh, uh, somehow uh, more and more uh, those technologies are affordable and could be used uh, uh, in any uh, domain. Mm -hmm. What uh, differences, what things are different about a green architecture that make it so special and so uh, positive for the environment specifically? You know, in the 60s and uh, uh, mainly when we started using concrete in a, mm, uh, in a way that uh, it demolished all our heritage, our, our uh, architecture. So. This break that we, we, we did it in the 60s, now we are coming back to those traditional way of building. You know that our, our traditional houses in the mountains or in Beirut, mm -hmm. they used to be with uh, higher uh, roofs, for example, to, to get ventilation. They, uh, they used to uh, 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 use uh, re less resources, uh, natural resources from the surrounding area. We use uh, the natural stone from our mountains, not importing stones and uh, uh, spending more money to uh, bring those uh, uh, materials. So this uh, way of construction and uh, conceiving our uh, designs and architecture, I think that we have a comeback now to return to those traditional way of uh, thinking. So for now, you, you can see that people more and more take care about the thickness of the walls, uh, take care about the materials that you are using, uh, using less uh, uh, natural uh, resources that we cannot afford, for example, if wood is a sustainable uh, material in uh, Sweden, it's not a sustainable uh, material in, in Lebanon, Lebanon because we don't have this uh, renewable uh, uh, source of materials. Mm -hmm. So these, uh, it comes with the culture. M maybe one people can understand that water or, uh, and now for example for the water, we are uh, feeling this uh, issue that people more and more uh, uh, understand that we have to rethink every time we use those uh, water that we think that w it, it cannot finish. Mm -hmm. What are some of the most Im uh, important aspects of green building that you think are perhaps uh, applicable in the uh, Lebanese and Middle Eastern region? Mainly when we talk about, uh, because we, we, we are a country that we have maybe 300 days of uh, sun and dealing with the sun, you can see that uh, in Dubai, for example, or uh, we had this trend of uh, building towers was uh, glazing, was and then we, we work on the air conditioning and spending more and more power and money to, to, to uh, uh, give a... To make uh, up for the lack of ventilation. Yes, so uh, now we, we can feel that people are uh, reducing those openings, mm -hmm. uh, using better uh, uh, those orientations and facades, use more the sun and the ventilation and uh, 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 the benefit from these 300 days of sun. We have a lot of examples in our traditional houses, those healthy houses with thick walls, natural stones, where we can uh, uh, fit inside uh, very easily during winter, during summer, it depends. So we have this arishi outdoor, uh, outdoor uh, the house and giving our shadow. Uh, now we can understand that maybe shading is an example of air conditioning before going straightly to the uh, air conditions directly. So you can use many types of, uh, f uh, I, saw, uh, I saw something in Yemen uh, by building those uh, on the facade, those uh, stones, uh, reversed stones that can shade the wall uh, using the uh, water, underground water uh, storage or tanks to give some humidity to the inside. Th those traditional ways that we can reuse with a, uh, a little bit uh, 
small changes to adopt uh, with uh, now the technology that we have. Mm -hmm. This idea of orientation uh, brings us into uh, one of the parts of uh, green building that I wanted to talk about for today. Uh, one of them is site development, which includes uh, reducing the impact of development on the natural environment. Mm. And an example of this is uh, orienting the buildings to take advantage of you know, solar access and different things that you were talking about specifically, mm -hmm. uh, wind patterns. All of this will lessen heating and cooling uh, mm. loads. So can you talk about site development for us uh, in, uh, as, re you know, as refers to or as uh, comes to uh, green architecture? Yes, uh, you know that in urban areas we, we, we have to think uh, uh, somehow that those constructions are changing the uh, traditional way of dealing with uh, those resources uh, uh, in case of sun or uh, uh, air or uh, those uh, uh, dimension that we have on uh, in the mountains and they are stable but mm -hmm. in the urban areas it differ because the streets will redirect the air uh, and now we we have this uh, uh, tendency to to uh, survey understand uh, uh, working more and more on those environmental impact report that we do before starting designing to understand the site mm -hmm. and then according to those uh, criteria and variables we can design our architecture so this is in the urban area but in the mountains we have those stabili uh, stability because if you have a valley you have this direction that uh, the valley can create and uh, create its microclimate uh, there and uh, uh, then uh, you have to start before designing uh, doing your drafts according to those criteria that you have already mm -hmm. for example the uh, site view and not contradicting with the uh, other issues uh, uh, redirecting uh, your uh, maybe uh, bedrooms uh, to the sun but uh, giving less and less shadow to uh, your uh, uh, living areas so those areas we, we cannot afford now to build any place anyhow and uh, uh, start uh, uh, g uh, giving solutions by using more and more power and technologies to solve our problems so it is just be before starting designing, we have to rethink about the criteria that we have on the site, the characteristic of the site, and deal with it. Mm -hmm. So we'll be back to discuss the other three issues uh, that I wanted to talk about today uh, right after our short break. So okay. please stay tuned. The crisis of capitalism, the European impasse, the energy shortages, the emerging power of Asia, the economic power of the Arab world, the economic debate, informative, revealing, and progressive. It discusses the economic event of the world. Economic debate where the numbers reveal the truth. rights redefined. Welcome back. Before continuing our discussion for today, let's take a look at this video. We're sitting in the new annex of a house which was originally built in 1971. The client who commissioned this project originally was uh, going to demolish the house, but we took the view that we should uh, renovate and restore it. The timber frame in the annex is made of uh, Douglas fir from Windsor Great Park, planted in the First World War. It was harvested in about 2006 
and then bought and machined by a local company. We used surplus timber that we didn't need for the frame for making, for example, solid timber panels for the walls. The overclad on the outside is all in chestnut, which is locally sourced. If you look at the detail of it, you'll see that it's finger jointed, which means that shorter lengths are joined together to make longer lengths, which is a much more efficient way of using the material. One of the benefits of using chestnut cladding is that you don't have to treat it, so the wood is just simply natural without any lacquers or stains. The concrete floors might be more a question for people who are really interested in sustainability, but they have the great benefit of being self-finished and they have an underfloor heating matrix in them which means that they hold a lot of heat so the heating system doesn't have to kick in very often. There are quite a number of roof lights, skylights in this project, particularly in the annex, to maximise natural light. Uh, this house incorporates um, three main technologies, uh, biomass for space heating, solar thermal for hot water through the summer months, and photovoltaics for producing electricity. The technology we chose for this biomass heating was a Vindhaga wood pellet boiler. It's extremely well designed with predetermined control systems. The solar thermal system has four flat plate panels. Solar thermal provides all of the hot water required for showering and bathing, etc., for about seven months of the year. There is about 20 PV panels providing approximately three kilowatts of power. We used LED and compact fluorescent lighting to minimise the electricity load of the house. Photovoltaic panels actually produce more electricity than the house needs, and so there is a surplus that is sent back to the grid. The annex has a sedum roof. It is quite useful from uh, a sort of energy point of view because it slightly dampens down the temperature variations on the, on the roof construction. One of the difficult decisions that you have to make as a designer on projects like this is the relationship between the energy performance of a product and the environmental damage that it creates. So for example, any kind of foam is a good performer, but we're aware of the fact that it ultimately comes from the oil industry. With this particular building, it was possible to use wood fibre because we had the space in the cladding system. I would question the need for so many new buildings. This project proves that you can take buildings which are suffering and turn them into highly sustainable places to live or work. So Mr. Noon, uh, back to our discussion for today. Uh, what can you tell us about the principles and the way of thinking beh behind sustainable architecture? Mainly we have, it's a cultural matter. So people have to think that paying a little bit more and getting on the long term more benefits at the level of the health, for example, at the level of the cost of energy that we are using for heating, for cooling, all these issues. And plus, we have to rethink about our regulation that could be uh, giving some incentives to the people from, uh, by the municipalities or by the local uh, authorities to give some incentive because actually now we're not paying a high bill for, for these uh, uh, services. So now to, to, to think about treating our grey water or sewage water and to, to push more people to use those options, we have to let them feel that uh, instead of throwing those uh, uh, waste to, to the sea and paying maybe 20,000 uh, Lebanese pounds per year for this uh, issue. By reusing those wastewater, you can benefit from the methane that uh, you are getting from this, compost you are getting from the uh, uh, residues and all these benefits. People doesn't know about this issue that waste you can turn it to energy mm -hmm. and your uh, building, smart building, could be interacting with the sun, the weather, the, the wind, and all these uh, uh, factors that can uh, uh, interact with your, uh, with your lifestyle uh, mm -hmm. inside. It's a matter of culture, and then it's a matter of regulation. After having this culture, by regulating all these issues and putting the incentives, the right incentives, we, we can, uh, at the end, think about a, a local community uh, with certain autonomy. Mm -hmm. 
So before moving to talking about more, more about the benefits uh, yeah. of green architecture, there were three other points uh, that, involve, that are involved in green building, which include material selection minimization, yes. uh, energy efficiency, and indoor air quality. Yes. What can you tell us about these three that make them so important and make them and differentiate uh, green building from regular building as we know it today? Mainly, we, we cannot afford all the time to buy anything from anywhere. Mm. So bringing the stones from China and uh, bringing the wood from Sweden and using all these resources that uh, uh, we are using the transportation, the paying for, the, uh, for the, uh, all those issues. Mainly we have to rethink about building starting from our environment, mm. from our actual resources. And as Lebanon have less resources, less and less, with green areas also less and less uh, 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 those okay. times. So we have to rethink about a new kind of uh, 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 materials, mm -hmm. such as recycling some of the waste that we are getting from the construction. Sometimes we are using uh, maybe a material that uh, uh, we are throwing those materials when we can use it. Plastic now is very affordable and uh, we are using plastic for full ceiling, for uh, insulation, for foams, transforming it to those uh, uh, additives to, to the construction material. So all these uh, benefits, mainly architects, because they are the person in charge to design and implement those ideas. Mm -hmm. People don't know about all these issues. So when we think that we're starting from our universities and implement those issues, now we have the courses about uh, uh, sustainable architecture, but we are giving it uh, just for the master degree, or but uh, it's, uh, maybe it's too late to, to reform an architect at the fourth year or five, uh, fifth year mm -hmm. and uh, to rethink about those issues. They have to think that it is part of the design and there is no more traditional architecture without thinking about sustainable architecture. Mm -hmm. So in uh, part of the kind of campaign to spread awareness about this idea of green architecture and you know a different way of thinking of, yeah. ar of architecture and building, uh, we should be talking about the benefits, which include environmental, social, yes. and economic benefits. Yes. What are some main benefits that you can talk about before we wrap up our episode for today? For example, when you reduce your, uh, reduce your invoice of heating during, uh, sometimes we have summer, summer days and people are using heating inside because they are not ventilated. Uh, we are in a shadow area. So benefits should start by uh, control or showing those indicators variables mm -hmm. that and it needs maybe to monitor your house for one year and see that create two tables was before and after and rethink about what was your invoices before and was your invoices after uh, what was your uh, actual uh, maybe uh, mood because we think about office building for example now uh, a great uh, example we can give it uh, uh, as a a great office building, it's the Google environment. So people love it, people don't want to leave it. Uh, instead of some places uh, that uh, people are annoying, that they are, uh, they are not uh, they are feeling... They are unhappy. Yes, they are mm. unhappy. And the, uh, for example, uh, yani, it reflects the uh, end result of those employees, those uh, in their mood, in uh, their uh, work. Yeah, the consequences are not just economical or environmental, yes. they're so also social. So this is uh, how, you, how you can feel it in your company, in your house, in your uh, creating a better uh, feeling, a better environment to work more, to, to uh, increase your uh, uh, productivity. Mm -hmm. So uh, to kind of wrap things up as a final question, yes. uh, where do you think our future is going towards? We have less and less resources. Mm. We are facing this. We're, we cannot afford to, to uh, uh, use anything we have and then uh, don't think about future uh, and don't think about our children. So uh, from this point, we cannot pay anymore those luxury that we had to have. Mm. So we have to think or rethink about how we are using our resources. This is first. Then we have somehow a uh, lot of power and a lot of energy around, so we have to think about how we can use it. Mm -hmm. Now we have less water, we have to rethink about how to use water in a uh, good way, how to recycle our waste, how to recycle our water, our gray water, for example. Inside, there is a scale of uh, residential scale, and there is a scale 
over a, a whole city. So how we can turn our cities to a green cities? And for sure, we have to put a plan, maybe for three years, five years, whatever. But we have to start now and to pass this transition to a green city. About the traffic, about the buildings, about the whole environment that we are using in all these uh, cities. We are facing uh, uh, a lot of problems if we don't start planning from now. Thank you very much for joining thank us you. today. So that's it for today. And thanks to our guests in the studio, Mr. Shakir Noon, and to you for staying tuned. So uh, see you next week. <laughs>